alien Romulus. Does it get the job done, or is it game over, man? It's game over. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to talk about Alien Romulus, and we're going to take a little bit of an analysis on it, see what was going on there. Is it worth your time, worth a dollar? And then if you stick around, I'm going to talk some spoilers just because there's some things I want to get off my chest as I just got done seeing it. And uh, I will let you know before I get into spoilers. I'll give a brief overview of the movie. But if for you who is not familiar, I am the man you may know as Z from Our Reviews Will Kill You, the party time podcast that brings you news reviews, entertainment stuff, all that good jazz. But we're going to talk about Alien Romulus. This is a movie by Fetty Alvarez. If you're not familiar, he did a remake of The Evil Dead. And this sure seems like a remake of the original Alien. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Alien movies, this is the ninth in the franchise. And if you're unfamiliar, I think you'll enjoy this. You're going to come in and be like, oh, yeah, this was fun. I like this movie. There's clearly a lot of love and care put into it. There, there's some really, really positive things that go over. And I'll go over the positive things that aren't spoilers. And then I think I'm going to get into... My criticisms are, are in the spoilers, really. So what we have here... Let's, let's take a look at, at some things. Because it, it made some money. And I think it means a positive future for the Alien franchise. Can you believe it's the ninth movie? That's outrageous. $100 million of the, uh, the global box office and topples Deadpool... I think it'll have good enough word of mouth where it'll keep it'll keep doing more. Is the second best opening for any um, for the series. I think the trailer helped it a lot, and the fact that it's a real like a kind of a true horror movie. It made a lot in China as well, which is good. I guess China is as ho, but sometimes you got to take the good with that, and uh, it. it it definitely the second best opening of any Hollywood film so far this year in China. Wow, that's shocking too. And this this franchise has been going on since 1979. If you folks didn't know that, like that that's a that's a long time ago. <laughs> it's like 40 years or something. And it finally kicked Deadpool and Wolverine out of the top spot in the box office. So that's all pretty pretty interesting. Let's look at the Rotten Tomatoes briefly. It's an 81 with the critics, 86 with the audience, which I think is a little higher than I would have given it. I probably would have given it like a C plus, maybe B minus. So an 81, maybe an 80, just to knock it down a tiny bit. While scavenging, well, let me, yeah, let me tell you what what my interpretation of the plot. But the critic consensus honoring its nightmares predecessors while chest bursting at the seams with new frights of its own. Romulus injects some fresh acid blood into one of cinema's greatest horror franchises. To me, this is almost like a soft reboot. It's it's kind of hard to say exactly what it is. In my opinion, if you are familiar with the other eight movies in the franchise, this is like the greatest hits. It, not exactly the greatest hits, but a bunch of scenes strung together that are all taken directly from the other movies. And, and I'll go through that shortly. But essentially what you have is a, a group of teens... I suppose, who work for Wayland yutani the company behind all of this infamous alien shenanigans, and they want to get off the planet. They're, they don't want to work for the mining company anymore because they don't obey child labor laws, apparently, because the lead girl is an unaccompanied minor and a minor, so she's a minor minor. And her and her synthetic friend are going to... They have to help a crew who, need, who want to heist some some frosty pods from this derelict floating above them. And essentially that's the plot is they go to the derelict space station and uh, stumble upon what they teased in the first scene. So there's not a lot of surprises, not a lot going on in plot here. It's just kind of a, a roller coaster. The runtime's a little bit too long. Definitely some stuff they could have cut, but Overall, the thing that's the most impressive about the movie, and I know I sound like I'm being negative, but it the, the sets, mwah, chef's kiss, absolutely stunning what they do with all like the mix of practical and CGI. The outer space scenes look amazing. 
all of, all of it looks phenomenal. I, I can't rave enough about how great they did with the atmosphere. Most of the directing was really good. I just thought overall the tone was good. There was, you know, a couple of jump scares and the overall, you know, alienness of it was was really good. The space stations, the ships, a lot of detail in there. A lot, a lot, a lot of detail and just did a really amazing job. Really, really a lot of uh, cool gear stuff and doors and things opening and closing and all that stuff was really cool. Uh, so now I'm going to get into spoilers because this is where I'm going to have some bones to pick. So if you don't want to be spoiled, if you like the Alien franchise, you're probably going to like this. Is it going to be? Is it the best one? Not even close. Is it in the top three? Here's here's my take. Is I nothing about it made me want to see it again. I'll put on Alien and Aliens and even Alien Three, Alien Resurrection if I want a good laugh. But everything after that, Prometheus, I I, just, I don't really like Prometheus that much. Alien Covenant, not a big fan of. So here you have these movies that, that they, they take the greatest hits from all of these movies and they honor all of the lore. So spoilers ahead. If you like Alien Covenant and you like Prometheus and you like the Black Goo and you like the Engineers... There's plenty of that mentioned in this here for you. If you like the first movie, and this is my biggest criticism, and they got a lot of hate for this, and I, I won't get in too far into it, but they're, they bring back essentially a synthetic. They, they bring back Ash, but he's not Ash. He's Rook. And I don't like the idea that they, they even name him Rook because they're kind of naming him as a predecessor to Bishop because I think this one takes place directly it, it clearly takes place after the nostromo is destroyed so what they do in the very beginning scene is they go pick up the ch i don't know if they're the charred remains or there's some sort of like hyper like space hibernation for the alien creature because it didn't actually die and then they release it and they experiment on it and they figure out how to get it to reproduce so, and it also seems like it's before Aliens because the technology is still kind of old. So, I'm not sure about all that, but but that's where, just like the endless homages, there's a, there's one of those portholes that closes like a sphincter, right? It closes in a circle. They have the little dipping, the little duck thing that drinks from the water thing, all homages to the regular alien. There's a scene that's a reference to Aliens where there's actually two of them. There's probably more than that, but the two that I noticed right off the bat is, you know, she uses the pulse rifle and has aim assist. And, you know, she's just, you get to hear that that really awesome machine gun sound. There's also even a reference to a cut scene from the director's cut of Aliens where they're running out of bullets on on these automated turrets and she's running out of bullets in her, in her the rounds in her pulse rifle. And then they have the, the her synthetic friend, the lead character synthetic friend, he says, uh, get away from her, you bitch. It's just like, you know, it's just like an endless parade of things from other alien movies. There's a scene from Alien Resurrection. They do, they recreate the, there, there's a, there's like an elevator tube that they have to go up. And that's a scene directly from Alien 4. There's a, there's a reference to Alien 3 where a guy gets the, he gets impaled and gets lifted up through the ceiling. All of these things, it was just felt to me like a somebody strung together a bunch of scenes from previous Alien movies and made this and then wanted to like top it a little bit. They want to have more face huggers. They wanted to have a weirder creature than the one that was at the end of Alien Resurrection which they kind of hit. And then they wanted to tie it back into Prometheus and Alien Covenant by making it look like an engineer. So I thought all of that stuff, in a sum of all its parts, just felt lackluster to me. So that's where my criticisms come from. I just didn't find it to be its own movie. I wanted it to stand on its own. The director clearly has the chops to do that. And if he had stopped making so many homages and didn't tie it into so many of the other movies, then, and I get the exact scene that he signed up for, which is the very end scene with the girl giving birth to the engineer slash alien hybrid. That's the scene he signed up for because he loves doing creepy, crazy things like that. 
and I don't blame him. And I, he's clearly a fan of all the movies where I think he could have done better just going with his own, his own way on this and not being such, it's almost, he was almost a slave to the, uh, the rest of the franchise where he could have just made a standalone movie that didn't really need any additional explanation. I also didn't like a lot of the peril on peril on peril on peril. I think that's a cheesy way of directing like that kind of, you know, not only are they crashing into something, but the aliens trying to get them. And not only is the alien trying to get them, but their suits cracking and they're running out of breath. Like that kind of stuff just seems a little amateurish just to drive up the tension when you could do something that doesn't need that. But overall, it's a positive experience. I just, I saw a lot of potential that was wasted, I think. And not to be a Debbie Downer, but it's still a good movie. But I wasn't like, I want to go back and see this again. It wasn't as scary as the trailers. They definitely left some things out of the trailers that were in the trailers that weren't in this. So maybe there's a better director's cut out there. That would be interesting to see. So if you go back and check out the trailers, there were clearly some scenes left out. What did you guys think? Did you actually, you know, if you got through the spoilers part, did you enjoy it? Do you agree with me? Have you seen all the movies? Like I said, if you don't have any familiarity with the movies, this is way more coherent than Alien Covenant and better than Prometheus. Uh, I don't think it's better than anything. Like, it's probably the fourth best movie. Maybe. I'm going to put it somewhere in there. Maybe I'll debate that with somebody someday. But let me know what you think of the comments. Were, am I off kilter here? Am I just being too much of a you know, my own personal biases around the other movies influencing this. I could be wrong. I'm not always right, but I do think it's like a C plus B minus. Like I said, an 80 gets a flat B minus for me. So I would love to hear what you guys think. In the meantime, check out our full length podcast. It's on Friday night, 7 30 PM Eastern standard time. We try to stream it on YouTube amongst other places. We're also rumble, Instagram, all those other places. Check out our shorts they're usually 10 seconds. We review a whole ton of things, have a lot of fun, do a lot of funny stuff. But in the meantime, I love all y'all. Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe if you made it this far. I appreciate it if you did. And I am on to the next one. <laughs>